And now... Please welcome our next Commander-in-Chief, my husband, President Donald J. Trump. My husband. Is it Donald J. Trump? It's such a nice accent. I like it so much. Melania Trump at the uh, big event at Madison Square Garden last night. Uh, Michael, did the, did it turn into a Nazi rally or were the fascists just sitting in newsrooms? Uh, with Lucite desks in front of them. I'm curious. Imagine uh, Melania Trump escaping communism. What a life story she has. What an extraordinary... They like to use the word journey, right? I, I don't use that word very much. So I'm talking about the band, but... What an amazing life. What an extraordinary life. And the news media just... Well, they despise everybody because they're the left. But Melania last night, Madison Square Garden. Did the Democrats perpetrate any violence there? I know they're... Some Democrat shot a um, a, a yarmulke-wearing Jewish guy in Chicago repeatedly because, you know, they uh, they defund the police, defund Israel, but fund the Islamic revolution in Tehran so that they can wage a genocidal war against Israel. The Democrat Party, they're looking for your vote. Absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. Yes, sir. Now, I had an action-packed weekend, I think I mentioned, on uh, Friday, maybe even on Thursday, that uh, two of my brothers were coming into town, two brothers in town visiting. And uh, yesterday, last night, we went to the Redskins game, hailed to the Redskins, went to the Redskins game, uh, and the Bears and my brothers, they came in from Chicago. Um, One of them in particular, a very, very enthusiastic Chicago Bears fan. And we had uh, an extraordinary time. It was an amazing football game last night. Where they last second, it's just uh, the Bears uh, finally caught up with seconds left and pulled ahead, uh, and uh, for the first time in the game, and then a hail mary. Uh, you can't say to beat all hail marys because all hail marys are hail marys to beat all hail marys. But it was an extraordinary finish by the uh, the Washington. They call them the Commanders now. That's what they call them. Too militaristic for me. I prefer Redskins. You know, what is it with the military-industrial complex and Democrats? And now we've got commanders, really? Com- shouldn't it be like commandos, or is that just for the locker room? I don't know what's going on there. So we got all this stuff going on. It was an amazing weekend and a very full weekend, very full weekend, action-packed, all kinds of stuff. And uh, now, where are we, Michael? We're uh, eight days away from, from Election Day. The big election is coming. You can hear it coming like a freight train. And and the I was watching CNN this morning because somebody's got to when I when I turn to CNN, their ratings go up noticeably when one person turns to CNN. It's not me. I'm not special in any way. But when one person goes to to CNN, they notice, hey, look, somebody tuned in and and they uh, they they get excited in the New York headquarters there where uh, even the Jews hate the Jews. It's kind of an amazing thing. But I, uh, I saw they were on this morning with that John Berman guy who is a hardcore Democrat shill, John Berman, and, uh, you know, and a, a seven-figure anchor at CNN. And they, they were talking about Election Day and violence, violence. And they're very concerned about violence because, you know, the left is very, very violent. And, and if they don't win everything, they're likely to burn stuff and steal stuff and, and wreck stuff because that's what they do. And a lot of Democrats, including some of the communists, are very upset, very concerned. Van Jones at, at CNN, also at CNN, self-described communist. Last time anybody asked him, nobody asked him after that because they're like, hey, when you ask him where he is politically, he says communist. I was, I was a, he's a communist. But never mind that, Van Jones on CNN, he, uh, he admits that uh, the party is, is uh, suffering from a lack of joy. Because like, remember, they were running on joy for a couple of minutes that didn't last very long, did it? And said the lack of joy, and he said that Trump is beating the pants off of us, beating the pants of us. And uh, Michael Pierce and I were talking about this this morning. And why is it they're they're always their mind is always removing pants? What is with that? They're they're a pantless bunch. 
And uh, maybe he's just talking about the children because you know how they are about all that. They're still fighting in favor of that gender queer, you know, uh, uh, man on boy sex manual for grammar school because the Democrat Party is really quite unwell. They've got a lot of issues and they're not uh, positive issues. They're mental issues. Amazing stuff. So we got that. And there's actually more Van Jones because he's uh, it, every now and then he sees reality. It's not easy for him. But every now and then. Now, President Trump, as I mentioned, had the big rally at Madison Square Garden with a packed house at Madison Square Garden and thousands more outside of Madison Square Garden in New York City trying to get into Madison Square Garden for the Trump rally. I have a couple of friends that were there in the arena, at least two, uh, I think three that I can think of off the top of my head that were inside the arena. And it was quite an event and it was all very positive and on the side of the United States of America. The Democrats, I don't know, if they showed up, they'd just be burning flags and uh, chanting from the river to the sea like they're Hamas, and, uh, and they'd be stealing stuff. If they really get riled up, they start burning police, cor- police cars, smashing out storefronts, and stealing stuff in mobs, because that's what the Democrat Party has become. It's pretty crazy. You've heard of March Madness. It's like November nuttiness is just around the corner, because the nutty, wacky, violent... Democrat Party, they are, they're very, very angry, very, like Marvin the Martian. They're like Marvin the Martian. They're very, very angry. Amazing stuff. But big rally there last night, and lots and lots of great people were there. J.D. Vance was there. Uh, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson was there. Former Democrat Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard was there. Now she's a Republican and not a Congresswoman. Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, RFK Jr., who said that his father and and his uncle would not recognize, would not recognize the Democrat Party today, that it would be unrecognizable to them, and he's right about that. Also, there were doctors there in case there was a medical emergency. They had Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz. They were, uh, they were in the house. Elon Musk was there. Uh, Hulk Hogan was there. And there were Jews for Trump all over the place. Crazy kind of Nazi rally <clears throat> when you have yarmulke wearing uh, uh, Jews for Trump. People with yarmulkes that say Jews for Trump on the yarmulkes, which puts them in a dangerous place because, you know, Democrats and they're so violent and everything. And and again, a Jewish man in a Jewish neighborhood in Chicago shot by a Democrat who was shouting Alo Akbar, Alo Akbar, you know, Allah is great, Allah is good and all that stuff. While he was shooting an obviously Jewish man, shot him repeatedly. Uh, Last time I looked, he was still alive. And uh, then he got in a shootout with the police because, you know, Allah is indeed quite Akbar, is he not? Wouldn't you say, Michael, is Allah Akbar? How Akbar do you think? Quite Akbar, very, very Akbar. So we've got uh, we got that going. And uh, the big rally, amazing stuff. Other politics over the weekend, not so much from Kamala. She just goes in and gets a tongue bath from the TV networks and doesn't have to answer any questions at all. They ask her, what time is it? And she said, when I was a kid, my next-door neighbors had very green lawns, very well-tended lawns. And at CNN, they just nod and say, yes, yeah, that's what time it is, green lawns, because our news media is the filthiest, most corrupt institution in the United States of America. With eight days to Election Day, it matters. Boy, does it matter. And November nuttiness. Uh, we're just about into November nuttiness. It's not too late for an October surprise. But the, uh, the Democrat Party, drunk with power and uh, their lust for power, is completely demented and out of control. Man, oh man, oh man, I am uh, I'm telling you. Wah, wah, wah. Can be just, yes, sir. Now, the Wall Street Journal has a, uh, they're, they're, they're in the news business sometimes, and they say it's, uh, it's costly, long, and exhausting, colon. They love their colons. Welcome to America's elections. And they're like, oh, yeah, these, uh, you know, you think, you know, uh, Michael, I I think we have that, um, you know, knucklehead DNC chair, governor, he uh, uh, explaining that he gave us the permanent campaign because before he was DNC uh, chair, old Howard Dean said that we just used to have elections and then we'd stand down for a couple of years. But thanks to him as DNC chair, uh, he... And the Democrats, they created what he proudly calls the permanent campaign. Remember I talked about the permanent campaign? I do. 
Well, before I got to the DNC, we didn't have a permanent campaign. You would oh. campaign for one year when you had a candidate, and then if you didn't win, you wouldn't campaign for the next three years. No wonder we lose. Now we don't just have a permanent campaign for electing Democrats. We have a permanent campaign for influencing policy. It brings us a little closer to the European model. It brings us a little closer to the European model. They all have this kind of micro-appendage complex about uh, being uh, not being European. They all want to be European because they don't want to be American, because they're not on our side, because they're anti-American and un-American. Howard Dean. Yeah! And uh, that's, uh, it was one of the most amazing ends to a political career ever. He thought he was having an exciting moment. Yeah! Now we're going to win! And we're going to win here! And we're going to win there! And then he And we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan! And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House! Yeah! <laughs> the scream became known as the scream. And Howard Dean uh, thankfully went away because he's mental. He's a mental case. But they love the idea that we have the permanent campaign. He should go to prison, I think. What, what do you think? Send out troops, send out the army to go get, maybe just have the FBI do a pre-run, pre-dawn raid with a CNN camera crew on the street outside like they're in the habit of doing. And they could stage some photos uh, the FBI could Uh, from inside his place, like they did with Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. And then uh, after staging uh, the scene and photographing, and then they could release it to unfriendly media because that's what the FBI did when they raided Mar-a-Lago. And all of that's fine. It's amazing what the corrupt, filthy media turns into a big deal and uh, make sure is ingrained in the public consciousness and what is not, you know? Like, who is James Hodgkinson? Who is James Hodgkinson? Democrat, he's uh, shot Steve Scalise. He was a Bernie, Stander, uh, a Bernie Sanders volunteer, and he was planning on murdering the entire baseball field of Republican members of Congress. But that didn't become a, even a two-day story. That was really just a one-way story, one-day story. Uh, and also a wild story from Newsweek magazine. Used to be a news magazine, remember them? And they explain, and this is from, this is from months, uh, well, from, from June anyway, of 2024, how India, you know, it's a country, and I think Kamala's mama is from there, right? And f- how India counted 640 million votes in a day, in one day. Wait a minute. Uh, but they're telling us now, and I've played the audio for you here, the Democrats are telling us, well, and the, and the media, but I repeat myself, telling us that don't expect to learn who the winner of the election is on election day. Because as a nation, we're not capable of doing that anymore. And the reason we're not capable of doing that anymore is because the Democrat Party made sure that we're not capable of doing that anymore. Because you got to keep in mind their boy Joseph Stalin and his line, it's not uh, who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. And when the voting begins after the polls close, that's where the Democrats really go to work. That's uh, that's where the nose goes to the grindstone there. Yes, sir. So the uh, India's massive electoral process and uh, June 4th of 2024, they uh, started the counting of votes and the big election involving 900 million eligible voters. It's a very populous country. Uh, and it's the world's largest election. It's a logistical marvel, you see. A six-week-long election. It ended on one Saturday, and the vote counting started on a Tuesday. They started counting on a Tuesday, and they counted a record-breaking 642 million votes. Their balance and the, their their ballots, and they did it in one day. They did it in one day. Uh, we can't do that now because the Democrats are actually the left, and they're not on our side at all. Isn't it amazing? That's kind of an amazing story, I've got to say. Uh, and good for India. India, the empire. Bangaluru. I have a nice uh, big uh, brass vase at home that I got in Bangaluru. Bangaluru. That's right. And, uh, oh, yeah, I, I, it's been a while since, since I came in here and sat down. You remember the Los Angeles Times refused to endorse Kamala Harris for president. So a bunch of leftists threw themselves off the roof of the L.A. Times building. They had to put nets up around the building because all the lunatic Democrats in the place pretending to be journalists. Well, the same thing happened at the Washington Post, and you'll never guess what happened. 
when the Washington Post and sent to billionaire Jeff Bezos said, we're not going to endorse Kamala Harris either. We're not going to endorse Trump, but we're not going to endorse Kamala Harris. You'll never guess what happened. We got Joe Scarborough, a.k.a. Mo Yarbrough. We got Kami Kamala and Tampon Tim. Is Joe Biden still president? Israel and the world? We got all kinds of amazing stuff. And we're at 888-630-9625. Let's go right to the uh, telephones, Michael. You know, election day is coming. Let's go to Luna. Calling from Charleston, South Carolina. Luna, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Chris. Thank you for taking my call. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly, Luna. Great, great. I was talking to Michael that, you know, you couldn't have said it better, that it's not the votes that count, it's the counting. The vote is what counts. It really is. I mean, I'm I'm really worried that they're going to cheat. I told told Michael that I'm from Venezuela, I've been in the United States for 40 years. I love it. And uh, when I was a legal resident, I couldn't vote. But that was because voting is not a right. It's really a privilege. Uh-huh. And that was the only thing I couldn't do. But I still I, I came, uh, became a citizen in a legal way, and I love this country. And this is Venezuela 2.0. I'm telling you, Chris, they're going to cheat. No matter what we do, no matter how much of a landslide Trump is going to have, because Trump is really having a landslide of votes. You can see it yesterday. You saw the Madison Square Garden rally. It's incredible. Uh, so I saw him in a rally here. It was electric. He came to Charleston. Uh-huh. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you that, you know, we keep our hopes up about Trump, but I'm afraid the people that are cheating are actually in government, and they're very powerful. And that's what they did in Venezuela. They cheated. They have too much power, too much money, too many millions. So what you- do we do? Well, and you fled Venezuela, and uh, and you uh, came to America for greener pastures, and now everything you see, everything you're you're looking around you, and you see that this is Venezuela all over again. It started with Obama. You know, he started dividing the country, and he kind of started it. And I saw a little bit the writing in the wall, like, oh, oh boy, you know, this is going the wrong way. And then Trump came and saved the country. And we're back at square one again. We're going down again. So I, I think they cheated into 20, in 2020 as well. I'm nodding. I'm nodding in agreement with you, uh, Luna. That and, and in particular, I started nodding out loud when you said uh, Obama started it, uh, dividing the country along lines of race. If you didn't support him, you're a racist. And that's the playbook they've been using ever since, with variations on a theme. Thank you, Luna. At CNN, they're preparing for violence. That's uh, this morning. Preparing for violence uh, on or after Election Day. And uh, the truth is, President Trump does have to win in a landslide, and then the Democrats may still burn things down because the, they're the left, and the left is violent and uh, bloodthirsty. And the, the left has taken over the Democrat Party in the United States of America. They're not what they used to be, not by a long shot. Uh, and and we should, uh, lots of people want to talk about the election, and understandably, rightly so, because tomorrow, today is Monday, of course, tomorrow, Tuesday, it will be uh, one week away from Election Day. And will we know who won the election on Election Day, on the night of Election Day? 2016 was one of the funniest, and, I, you know, it rolled over past midnight, before we had a uh, President Trump declared the winner. And you remember the New York Times said that Hillary had a 92% chance of winning the election. So Democrats were like, of course she's going to win. The New York Times says she's got a 92% chance. You can't, you can't lose when the New York Times says you got a 92% chance of winning. And uh, then she lost. And it was really well, no, one of the funniest things ever. It was hilarious. I woke up my best girl... <clears throat> about, what was that, 1.30 a.m. or 2 a.m., when it was uh, called by the Associated Press and by various other crying entities who who uh, wet their uh, ladies' undergarments, and that's just the men uh, from uh, their panic. Pretty amazing stuff. But now, 
this time around, what you really want is a decisive, unambiguous, something that you can't argue about after the fact, you know, that kind of a victory, which which should be real good. I'm going to get to President Trump and the, uh, there was a comedian uh, at the Madison Square Garden thing last night, a guy that I had never heard of named Tony, Tony Hinchcliffe. And he told a joke that I'd say wasn't a very funny joke, but it's got uh, CNN and all the left-wing radicals, the, the front groups, uh, they're all in a panic. They're, they're soiling themselves once again. Quite amazing stuff. And I'll get to that as well. And, and CNN, oh, no, the violence, and it's so scary because, the, you know, you guys, it, it's amazing that they don't, they don't actually remember much of anything at all, such as the uh, hundreds and hundreds of violent riots that they launched over their St. George uh, Floyd, St. George of Fentanyl, dying of cardiac failure while resisting arrest because of all the fentanyl and methamphetamine in his in his bloodstream. But uh, they can't remember the attack on the White House that went on for three days where they set the Church of the Presidents on fire and and forced the evacuation of the president and the first family to the underground nuclear bunker. They don't remember these things. Thousands of police injured, literally. Billions in property damage, according to the insurance industry. And uh, they looted and burned. And uh, who's uh, police captain David Dorn? Anybody remember police captain David Dorn? He was murdered by the Democrats who were looting a store. And when he interfered, he's a retired police captain and his neighborhood, there was an immigrant man trying to run a business and the Democrats were burning and looting it. David Dorn, retired police captain, the African-American man, inter- intervened and uh, the Democrats shot and killed him. But not only that, they streamed his uh, last moments on earth uh, live online with their phones because they know that much. And remarkable stuff. Now, why isn't David Dorn a household name like, like so many other people? Uh, that the Democrats turn into household names like uh, St. George Floyd, a career criminal drug addict. Sad, tragic story, no doubt. It's a sad, tragic story, but uh, they turn him into a hero, but a career police captain murdered by Democrats and his death is live-streamed while he's trying to stop Democrats from looting and burning an immigrant's business, and uh, David Dorn is not a, a hero, all right? And you got like uh, ridiculous fake environmentalists that become heroes, teenage girls that, that don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, and, and we're supposed to, you know, Gr- uh, Greta von Thunberg, uh, and uh, 90% of her fun is below the waterline. She's uh, like an iceberg, but she, she is a household name and a hero of the Democrat Party because of what again? And then, uh, you know, you got your uh, teenager out of Florida who became the instant expert on guns. Yeah, David Hogg, because there was a, a terrible shooting at his school. And they, they love the child prophets, don't they? Greta von Thunberg and David Hogg and, and uh, just amazing stuff. How dare you? I couldn't agree more. The, uh, the Democrat Party, they're the left. They're not liberals. They're the left. And they're here to destroy, to steal, to take to uh, leave in shambles. You know, they're left as they do every place else. Extraordinary stuff. You bet. Um, and with that, let me go back to the phones because people people are eager to talk and, and uh, I understand why. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to Doug calling from Newark, Delaware. It's not Newark, you know, like, but it's uh, Newark because it's in Delaware and that's Joe Biden's home state. Um, very... <laughs> Very, very sorry. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Um, I just wanted to say uh, Friday was Delaware's first day of early voting, and there must have been a 1,000 people in line. My wife and I, we waited for three hours to vote. Wow. Now, here, you know, we're all talking about the election and everything like that, but when, when I got into that voting booth and closed that curtain and I seen Donald J. Trump's and J.D. Vance's name come up on that thing, that's when it hit me what an important election this really is. It's, it's, it was it was almost spiritual, man. I mean, it was it was crazy. So this uh, early voting, I, I I believe, is really catching on. 
Yeah, well, it is. And uh, and the Democrats are in a panic. And that means the news media, you know, people at CNN and MSDNC are in a panic, too, because the numbers uh, in which Republicans are voting early, uh, we tend to vote on Election Day and, uh, you know, be pro-American and all that stuff. And, and this year, Republicans are voting in record numbers. Now, Doug, you voted all the way down ballot, too, right? All the way down ballot from the top to the bottom. Very good, because, I mean, everything from the House and the Senate. Uh, we got to get the House and the Senate. No, to, we need to school judges. board. Yeah, that's right. Judges, the school, school board. board. Yep. Right, right on down the line. And my wife did the same thing. She, she wasn't no Trump fan, but we have seven children, so she voted for the economy and the future of our children. I said, so that must mean you voted for you-know-who. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that would that would explain it. Yeah. And look, I, uh, you know, I know people that uh, I know people that are lifelong Republicans that don't like Trump. I know people that are Democrats that that despise Trump. And I know people that are in both categories that are voting for Trump anyway. You know, I mean, this is, as you said, it is a big, important election. And it's and it may even be more than that. It's a fundamental litmus test for for each individual voter, for every household, and for our country uh, as to whether absolutely we want to hold on to American ideals, Western ideals, whether we want a strong economy, whether we want national sovereignty, whether we want uh, little boys to grow up to be men and little girls to grow Girl. up to be women, uh, fundamental science and biology. Uh, the Democrats put a woman on the Supreme Court that doesn't know what a woman is, can't tell you what a woman absolutely. is. These are demented times, crazy times. And, and let me tell you something, Chris. Yeah. I met a lot of people when I was in that line, and you could almost tell who was voting for who. I mean, when people came out, like the crowd that I was standing with were applauding people and very upbeat and happy. And then, like, some of the people that you applauded for, they just walked by so grouchy. I, was, I just, I, I just, it was just amazing. Well, what did you conclude based on um, on uh, physiognomy and uh, and body language? Well, I would have to. I probably conclude that they were Democrats. I would have to say <laughs> the miserable, uh, unhappy people that they, were snarling. Absolutely. I mean, it, it. Yeah, it was so obvious that you know. But I, you know, I'm sixty some odd years old, and I voted in several elections. Uh huh. But when I got into that voting booth this time. It seemed like the most important vote I ever cast in my life. Wow. Well, it is. It, it's uh, quite fundamental. You know, Kamala is as bright as your average tree stump. She doesn't know how to know, answer yeah. a single question. She was made the nominee in a terribly undemocratic way uh, and just given by the party machine and what used to be a smoke-filled room and now maybe a vape-filled room or something. And and uh, she was given this this opportunity, I'll call it uh, for the moment, by the party bosses. And uh, and even the party bosses don't like what they've done because they know that she's awful. And, you know, you talked about three hours to vote. And you voted in Newark, right? In Newark, Delaware? Yes, yes uh, sir, I did, right there by the university. I have one more question for you. Yes, sir. What is your prediction on November the 7th on self-immolation? Well, you know, I'm. <clears throat> I remain hopeful. Ever the optimist am I, Doug? And <laughs> and you know, uh, we've had six Democrats self-immolate since Earth Day two years ago in the United States of America, and uh, two of them, two of them self-immolating. One at the Israeli embassy, about a mile from where I sit right now at this radio station in Washington D.C. At the Israeli embassy, one and he was an active duty Air Force Democrat. And he self-immolated and killed himself and made video of it and uh, pretty amazing stuff. Somebody else had to post it, of course, because, you know, he burned all the cilia out of his lungs. And a woman that self-immolated at the Israeli consulate in Atlanta didn't even know he had an Israeli consulate in Atlanta. And uh, one self-immolated outside the Donald Trump courthouse in New York. And the news media now treats this like it's, like it's no big deal, like it's nothing to see at all. Remarkable stuff. So it makes sense to, to have a... a National Self-Immolation Day, November the 7th. Well, I, uh, I got I to gotta tell you, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. The uh, yeah, day after self-immolation. 
And we do have to look at it again. CNN, they're worried about violence uh, and, and, and they misrepresent everything, of course. The Democrat Party is the violent party. They're like January 6th, January 6th. And here at the Chris Plant Show, we call January 6th Ashley Babbitt Day because Ashley Babbitt, right. a young woman that spent 12, one murdered. Yeah, 12 years in the U.S. Air Force, was shot and killed while unarmed by a racist police officer, U.S. Capitol Police officer. Uh, and uh, he was promoted and celebrated and given awards for shooting an unarmed woman uh, and and uh, 12 years in the Air Force. And she was, you know, deserved to um, maybe you could tase her. Maybe you, you know, could knock her with a nightstick. Maybe you could just grab her and arrest her because you're a big, strong man. Uh, the alleged crime was trespassing. And now that's a death penalty offense when it comes to Democrats because they're fascists. You know, they're like Nazis. And uh, and they love calling everybody Nazis because it's, as you probably know, Doug, it's the it's the old Russian playbook. It's the Soviet playbook that that's right. Whatever they accuse you of is what they're doing. And, uh, you know, and it's a Saul Alinsky thing, too. It is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. That's how we know that they're the Nazis and they're the fascists because, you know, and they're here uh, again, the left is coming for your rights. The left is coming for your rights. And today's Democrat Party not on our side. Well, Doug, I'm glad you got out and uh, voted. And first day of early voting was Friday in uh, Delaware, Joe Biden's home state. Joe Biden didn't know that. He still doesn't know it. Joe Biden doesn't know whether today's Monday or not. He's not sure whether it's October or November. Joe Biden is still the president of the United States. So who is running the country uh, honestly, Doug, who do you think's running the country right now? Because we know it's not Joe Biden and it's not Kamala Harris. So who is the actual de facto president? If I were to guess, I would have to say Barack Hussein Obama. And I did say Hussein. <laughs> that's uh, that's great. Doug, Doug, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for voting. And honestly, uh, early voting is the it's all the rage this year. It's the big thing. And. Um, you know, we've all got to, if you can vote early, that's great. And, and you've heard all the talk about it. You know, if you get a million Republicans to vote early and then, uh, 600,000 Democrats vote early, it's going to be, um, uh, more difficult to swing that on election day in, in your city or your state or, or wherever, uh, remarkable, remarkable times we're in. Uh, all right. I've got so much for you coming up. The media, they are having a mental and sexual, you know, gender meltdown, which uh, much of that's perfectly normal, of course. But they're uh, they're very, very, they're very mental. Uh, CNN is really demented. Uh, if you can block them on your cable, that'd be fine. There's nothing to watch there. I'll watch some of it for you. But I don't want to give them too much in the way of ratings. We are at 888-630-9625. I have, uh, I have friends in New York, a bunch of friends in New York, New York and New Jersey, and even a couple of Connecticut, you know, for New York reasons. And, and uh, friends voting last week in New York also told me three hours, three hours, and sent me pictures of the lines going around schools of people waiting patiently literally for hours to get in. Uh, and uh, it's going on all over the country. And conservatives are showing up early. I have a wonderful woman friend in, uh, in New York, and she said she's wearing a Trump pin, young woman, very, uh, very nice, very lovely, lovely young woman, and she's wearing a Trump pin. And she said, and this woman... An older woman came stumbling up to her wearing three masks, surgical masks, wearing three layered surgical masks. And the lady with three masks came up to her, young woman wearing a Trump pin, and, and leaned forward and quietly said, vote Trump. Vote Trump. <laughs> Not what you expected to hear. Uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to the phones again. Let's go to uh, Russ calling from Winchester, Virginia. <laughs> Russell, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call, Chris. You betcha. Hey, I, uh, my wife and I, my wife and I went and voted early out here in Winchester. Mm -hmm. I was really pleased to see so many people 
uh, there to vote. And I was reminded of my grandmother. My grandmother was uh, able to take do the first vote in 1920 when women were given the vote when when the constitutional amendment went through. Uh-huh. And she and my great my great grandmother and my grandmother's uh, sisters and my great grandmother's sisters all went together to vote. And my grandmother, after that, never missed a single national election in her lifetime. Uh, she lived until 1996. And um, the only time she ever missed an election, there was a local um, primary that uh, took place uh, in, um, in Florida. And she missed that. But other than that, she, she took it very seriously. And the interesting thing is my great-grandfather, um, he voted, his first vote was for Ulysses Grant. Wow. When he voted. My, he, my, yeah, my great-grandfather was born in 1847. Wow. And, um, but he was livid when he found out that my grandmother married a Democrat. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> well, you know, they were the party of the Confederate States of America and Jefferson Davis and the Klan and Jim I hadn't even gotten to Jim Crow by then, of course, but uh, remarkable, remarkable. And also the Democrats kept women from getting the vote. They fought against women getting the vote against the 19th Amendment. They they fought uh, hammer and sickle against that. They fought it in Congress. They fought against it. Uh, finally, a Democrat president, racist segregationist Woodrow Wilson, was forced to sign it. Uh, but then the Democrats went to work fighting it in the states, trying to keep the states from ratifying it. Right. They didn't want women well, having was, the vote. I'm they didn't very... want black people having the vote. The Democrat Party is a stain on the history of humanity. Very true. Yeah. Well, I'm I am uh, I I'm a born again uh, Republican now. <laughs> and uh, but... went away so, and came back. Did you to share that story? Well, yeah, we've run out the clock on you more or less here, but uh, you know you're not alone. There are a great many millions. <laughs> 